If you remember, last year, around the summertime, we decided that we need a home base, a place to travel to and from. And we decided that Bangkok will be it. So in July, we signed a one and a half year contract on this lovely apartment. But as you can see, eight months later, here we are and it hasn't quite worked out. There are a few different reasons for that and we'll get into them throughout this video. But for now, it's our last couple of days here. So let's head out for a walk. This is one of our favorite spots in central Bangkok, by the way. This is Nyla Park, and we are literally about five minutes from Plunchit and Chitlom BTS station, right in the heart of the city, but it's like a hidden gem. It's absolutely gorgeous here, and you can't hear any of the crazy traffic. You're in the shade, it feels a few degrees cooler. It's a really, really nice place. We've come here so many times since we've moved here just to sit down, read a book and collect our thoughts. And a lovely, lovely place. So the one thing I just said about Nyla Park is how tranquil it is here and how quiet. And at that very second, <laughs> there's building work in a building just over the other side of the park there going on. And it literally started as I said that. So um, yeah, it's usually tranquil here, but today, not so much. Not so much. <laughs> If we rewind eight months uh, into where we were at that point in time and what brought us to the decision to pick Bangkok as our base, I think both personally um, and as a couple we were potentially going through a period of time where we had to work a lot of things out um, and I think at that point we knew we needed a base, we knew we needed somewhere to travel to and from, somewhere to come back. Um, and work from as we've said in that video if you've watched it and I think we still stand by that but the reason that we chose Bangkok specifically the overlying reason I think is because we love this city uh, and it feels like a happy place to us and we thought I think subconsciously that being here was going to solve a lot of the things that we were both going through both internally and externally and I think we came to realize pretty quickly that that isn't the case and that being in a certain place if it's not right for you is not going to solve that. I think it was about two weeks in to be honest after signing the contract that we realized that perhaps this wasn't the right place for us um, to be based and just in general for many reasons I think it's hard to come to terms with and I think that we also put that to the back of our heads even though we both realized deep down we didn't want it to admit it to ourselves, especially after signing an 18 month contract. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we ignored it for a little while and that was until we went off for a month's travel where we were gonna go to China, we were gonna go to South Korea and then up to Siberia to spend a little bit of time with Julia's family and exploring Siberia in the winter as we love. And it was at that point that we realized we were getting further away from Thailand and I think we wanted to explore more, another part of the world, another part of the world. And we were moving further and further geographically from Thailand. <laughs> and as it turned out, this trip that was supposed to be six weeks to be specific, turned out to be four months. And it was at that point, <laughs> after taking a bit of a step back as well towards the end of that trip, that we both said to each other at the same instance, we're in the wrong place. We've chosen the wrong part of the world. And it hasn't changed how much we love this city, love this country, love the food, love the culture. But we realized for where we want to be and film and what we want to show and where we want to travel, we just picked the completely wrong end of the world. And that led us back to this point. So we decided to come back here, spend a month in the city just to make sure that what we felt when we were on the road was correct and it was <laughs> and I'll let you continue the story from there essentially we wanted somewhere I guess convenient to have a home where we can go back to pretty easily but end up being really far away 
and very expensive to get to. So instead of making our lives easier, we kind of made it even more complicated because we're moving further and further away from home and making it more and more complicated to go back. And if I'm completely honest, we love spending time in Southeast Asia. We love, there is not one thing. There's a lot of things that we love about this part of the world, but it's not where we're going to be filming majority of our content. Occasionally and 100% sometimes, but mainly, no. And I don't know why we've been lying to ourselves that we can make it work. I don't know, sometimes I think we're very strange people. But sometimes it's better to see it from, it, it's easier to see it from the side rather than when you're in it. If that makes sense? So there are lots of different reasons why we decided that, you know, we need to make a move. But the geographical reason is the main one, 100%. Well, and the second biggest reason. If you know me, <laughs> you would have guessed it by now. <laughs> the climate. I can't. I can't. Maybe I'm broken, honestly. I don't know. I don't know anyone who is, feels the same way. I wish I wasn't like that. I wish I loved the heat. I thought at first as well that maybe I'm struggling because I'm genuinely not used to it. And then I started asking people around. So I asked lots of different people from all over the world that moved to Thailand. You know, some of them are used to warmer climates, some of them are used to cooler climates. But everyone said the same, that they love this heat. It makes them happy. And I do envy that. But it's just not me. I struggle a lot. So look, as with anywhere, I think there's pluses and minuses with every city, town, village, country across the world, just as there is with Bangkok. But for us, they were the main two reasons that we just couldn't seem to overcome, no matter how hard that we thought about it. It's an incredible place and we love it, but it's just not for us. Not at this moment in our lives anyway. It's an amazing thing because I believe that we happen to be in Bangkok and in Thailand in the right time for us in life because we learned a lot and we grew a lot as people. And also it's amazing to have the place in the world that we love so much and we would love to spend time here and come back anytime we have the opportunity and it's wonderful. It's a bit hard for me because I think it's not a natural way of thinking for me and it's still a learning process, but it's hard for me to kind of understand it in my head, I think, that you can love a place so much and feel at home here, but still for it not to be right for you, you know? By the way, for anyone watching that maybe thinks we should have thought all this through before we came here in the first place, we did think of every single point that we've already mentioned in this video. But I think at that point in time, eight months ago, in the headspace that we were in, we were potentially looking at our decision through rose-tinted glasses, if that makes sense. Yeah, and you I think, think, oh, you can make it work. Exactly. We thought we could make everything work and that it would be really easily solvable. Mm -hmm. And I think it quickly became apparent that the problems we thought were small problems were a lot bigger in reality. And that brought us to make a call. And this is the call that we made. And I think we both know that and we feel that this is the right call. As upsetting it is to leave our lovely little apartment that we've become accustomed to, it's the right decision. The thing is as well, we really wanted to make it work. We really did. And it wasn't an easy decision to make and a decision that we thought about long and hard. But also naturally, that's actually the way of thinking that I want to change, I guess, the way of being. I'm a massive overthinker. Jesus Christ, honestly, the things that pop in my head, I can't even, I can't even admit to myself that I'm thinking them. And it's a very tiring way to live. And as Matt just said, like, we should have thought, yeah, should have, could have, hindsight is a wonderful thing. And you know, this video is not about that. I think we're learning as people that, you know, you can make mistakes and that's, and that's okay. okay. That's okay. And that's something that we, both haven't been good with is just accepting that sometimes we get things wrong you know we're all human we all do things in good faith hoping that they're the right decision 
but you can come back from any decision and you, you can change anything you want to and that's fine no one's gonna no one's gonna judge you apart from potentially yourself if you're that way inclined and I think yeah this year especially has taught us to accept that as people we're gonna make mistakes but as long as we're trying to do everything in good faith and for the right reasons we're just trying our best same exactly. as everyone but i don't know why i don't know whether everyone's the same or you're the same it's easy to feel that way towards everyone else around you but not to yourself well i struggle with that anyway and i guess you do too so on that note i don't know if you can see my t-shirt <laughs> But this is nothing. <laughs> this is nothing compared to my back and my crotch. No, so, no, 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 no. Let's go find an air-conditioned mall or shop to stand in for ten minutes, and uh, then go for a walk further into the city. Yep. Let's go. Don't look at my back. <laughs> walk back. <laughs> That wasn't me, by the way. <laughs> it was me. <laughs> Joking. The idea behind this video is to share that it's okay to try and it's okay for it not to work out. Not to work out anyway in the sense that you hoped or wished it would. In the end of the day, nothing is the end of the world. Sometimes it may seem that way, but it actually not is majority of the time. Why it is really important for me to share this because it's not a natural way of thinking or behaving for me. Um, Sometimes, probably more times than I would like to admit to, certain things are more of a end of the world for me and I get upset or affected by them way more than I should. But that's a different kind of subject and I'm pretty sure I'm not alone on this boat. And I think the most important thing in life as well is what I'm coming to realize is to be honest with yourself. And I think it's one of the hardest parts because we get influenced by our families and people that are near you and they don't mean any harm and they don't want to do anything bad for you. But subconsciously, naturally, it just happens like that, that we become more or less disconnected with ourselves and we don't trust our own judgments and simply just lying to ourselves. I don't think we do it intentionally. I think majority of the time we do it for a cause of just being loved. This wasn't an easy decision for us to leave Bangkok because in many levels I think we felt like we we're failing um, by doing that and because on many levels Thailand feels like home. We love being here in the end of the day and everyone has been really welcoming and just lovely to us but in the end of the day it's not the right decision and it's been hard to actually accept it and to make an action on it right now and there's been so many occasions that we've been torturing ourselves by going backwards and forwards and questioning constantly our decision on that thinking that maybe we're failing or maybe we're being weak or we're not proving something we're not proving enough to ourselves you know by just by just sticking with it and plowing through but deep down we know it's the right decision for us and as sad as it is to leave now we're not leaving forever we'll always be happy to come back and spend time here it's sad to leave this apartment but that what makes us feel that it's kind of meant to be because it worked out that this apartment is going into good hands which we'll tell you about in a bit I can she zip it up. I don't think it will be no, possible to be honest. Oh. Zip it a little bit. Yeah. So there's a flap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think this last few days are going to be the worst. We actually started packing 
pretty much a week ago because we just wanted to see how much stuff we have and decide what we're actually taking what not uh, some things to give away and all that kind of stuff but we decided to pack all the sort of main bits that we're not going to use now and that there is less to do on the last day I think because we've made this decision a while ago and we've come to terms with it and subconsciously I think we let go mm. it's kind of we are packing a lot during the last few days and then we're gonna be living in pretty much an empty house for the last few days that's not my kind of way of packing. I pack last second because I kind of know in my head what I need to buy and what to do, you know. But then I'm packed, I'm gone. I am gone. So this is, this is also new for me. I think that's the, the main thing, isn't it? Is that subconsciously, I think our foot's already, we've already got one foot outside of the door. Yeah. And we're, we're ready to go. Um, and I think now it's just the waiting game the next few days to get to that point. Just wanted to tell you what actually is going to happen to our flat. When we made this decision that we are actually going to give up our apartment and, you know, deal with the consequences, you need to speak to the owner of our flat and all that. So we have a friend. He is English, but he was basically moving to Thailand. He just got his job in Thailand and we were like, hey, are you interested? in our apartment by any chance so we sent him videos and pictures and he was like yeah cool let's go through with it so then it was a big thing about speaking to the owner of our apartment if he's going to be okay with that like going for all that we were building up so much we were so worried that like we're letting him down and then we end up speaking to him on the phone for like i don't know 30 seconds he was like yep all cool i'll speak to chris our friend who's going to live in our apartment and they became friends. They end up chatting for like an hour. <laughs> Says a lot about us. He spent 30 seconds on the phone. <laughs> Anyways, so it all kind of happened that it all just worked out. And I just can't help but feel like it was fate. It was meant to be. So yeah, I'm just um, finishing last couple of bits of packing of, you know, packing that we can do for now anyway and Chris is actually here Matt just went downstairs to register him with the office so you know he can have his fingerprints and face recognized and all that stuff and then we're gonna go and figure out what we need to do with the internet and yeah basically handing our apartment today gonna give him the keys and that's pretty much it even when we made this decision everything seemed quite far away quite distant but now here we are. It's already happening. But um, I feel like with majority of things in life now, everything seems so distant and now, hey, it's happening. Life seemed to go by too fast. <laughs> made it to the final few hours here we went out earlier to a place called Bangkok seafood for a last supper and to be honest it's become a bit of a tradition the last three times we've been or even four times we've been in the city we've gone there on the last night so it felt right and then we went for a wander through Ben Chiketi Park which if you're ever in Bangkok we highly recommend there was a beautiful sunset and we made our way back done our final bits of packing in an hour or so, Chris is getting here and we're going to hand over the keys and head off to the airport. That's, yeah, that's the thing, isn't it? It doesn't feel like we're leaving for good. <laughs>
I'm not staying here. <laughs> One last look. Bye bye. <laughs> I bet you didn't expect that, did you? It's often defined that you need to be stressed and constantly on the edge to be a high performer and it's something I believed in my whole life but it actually harms both your mental and your physical health. Also, there are too many distractions nowadays which makes it hard to focus on what you actually want to be doing. We wanted to share this beauty with you and a rather tasty treat, Magic Mind, which is a perfect addition to your daily routine. It's a carbon neutral mental performance shot that can help to enhance your mood, motivation and focus while reducing anxiety and stress. It was created alongside an advisory board of doctors and medical researchers and you can find over 200 scientific studies online about every ingredient in this shot. And by the way, all the ingredients are third-party tested and sourced from the best suppliers. For example, the organic ceremonial great matcha that is only taken from the first harvest of each year. What we both really like about Magic Mind in particular is their transparency. They're not reliant on quick fixes and this is not a quick fix. They believe that mental performance should be tackled over the long term and some of the ingredients can take three to four days to get into your system. So they recommend taking Magic Mind daily and see how you feel after the seven day challenge, which is what Julia and I have been doing over the past seven days and we feel much better for it. Honestly, the difference in our energy and focus compared to a week ago is actually pretty wild. You know that feeling when you're consuming something that is good for you as it's going down to your stomach, you can just feel the good it's doing. Magic Mind does just that. It's shipped internationally to over 65 countries and the best part is that you can follow the link in the description box below and enter our code MATTANDJULIA20 at checkout for up to 50% off your first subscription for the next 10 days. If you would like to get more exclusive content from us like daily vlogs and other travel vlogs that we don't put on YouTube, you may want to check out our Patreon community where we post our future plans and loads more other different things. And if you would like to get your name on the credit section here and just support our channel. On that note, thanks for watching this video and see you in the next one. And thanks once again for watching. Don't forget to check out Magic Mind by using the link in the description box below and enter the code MATTANDJULIA20 at checkout for 56% off your first subscription for the next 10 days. See you in the next one.